and welcome to my first video. We're going to be making crab cake stuffed salmon. So go ahead and screenshot this for the ingredient list or you can get it in the description. So right now we're going to go ahead and start with the crab cake mix. You're going to use 3-4 cups of the panko breadcrumbs, 1 third cup of mayo, Two tablespoons of the Dijon mustard. Worcestershire sauce. Hopefully I said that right, but that's two teaspoons. Then I used eight ounces of crab, but you can use more. I would say up to 16 ounces only though. Then I used the no salt Tony Chacheries. I used about a tablespoon of that. And I wanna say that I also used a tablespoon of the Old Bay. Not too much, just enough for that flavor. Then I did add some garlic powder. Also some onion powder, of course, for flavor. And then the smoked paprika is optional, but I do like to add it for color and just a little bit of extra flavor. And we're gonna go ahead and fold that up together. Just make sure you get it mixed in very well so the flavors can mash up. So I am gonna go ahead and put some olive oil on the salmon. You do not have to keep the skin on. My family and I, we prefer it, but if you don't want it, you don't have to have it on there. And just go ahead and rub that olive oil in really, really well, just to make sure that if you do keep the skin on, that you get that really crispy bottom. All right, so I am using some accent. This is optional as well. You don't have to use accent, it's just my preference. Then some garlic powder. I'm also adding some onion powder, of course. And then I did use blackening seasoning. You can use any seasoning that you want. This is just my preference um, for the flavor that I was trying to accomplish. And now I'm flipping this over. Of course, we're going to season the other side. I'm using the exact same seasonings on this side, so I'm not going to show the canisters, but again, don't worry. It's the same exact seasonings that I use on the other side. And again, um, I don't want you guys to um, be overwhelmed with any measurements or anything like that. I didn't have any specific ones for um, how much I put on the salmon. It was just enough to, you know, coat the fish and, yeah, give it that flavor. And here you will just see me just rubbing in the olive oil before I put that extra um, layer of seasoning on there just so that way the fish is coated and we keep it as moist as possible during the baking process. So I am slitting it first um, before seasoning just to make sure that the seasoning penetrates the meat. Um, I'm just slitting it with a small knife and then just spreading the meat just a little bit. I didn't go in and add any of the extra scoring. Just one slit down the middle will do. All right, so garlic powder again. Some more onion powder. Some more of that blackening seasoning and just ensure that you cover the entire fish. All right, and some of that smoked paprika. Thank you. 
all right and i did go ahead and just show you guys a speed it up process basically the slit that you guys made that's what you'll be filling up with the crab cake mixture um just make sure that you pack it in tightly and make sure that you put enough and whatever you have left over just top off the rest of the fish with and then we'll be moving on to the next step all right so we are going to season up our shrimp put a little bit of olive oil some of that no salt tony shasheries then some smoked paprika of course garlic powder and also some onion powder and then just a tad bit of sea salt not too much just going to go ahead and give that a good mix make sure that each shrimp is entirely coated all right and once that's done being coated we're going to go ahead and put these on top of the fish i layered them on um, just like in a row you can decide however you want to do it you can even chop the shrimp up and put it inside the crab cake mixture just whatever you want to do but this way i did it it was more aesthetically pleasing and yeah it looks fancy so we went with this way and just a little bit of parsley for presentation purposes this is definitely optional you don't have to do it but just wanted to add a little bit of color all right and pop that in the oven on 350 for 35 minutes all right and so now we're about to boil our pasta i do add chicken bouillon and sea salt just for flavor um of course go ahead and pour in some oil so that your noodles don't stick and water <laughs> We're going to bring that to a boil, so make sure you have it on a higher temperature. And while that comes to a boil, we're going to go ahead and start our sauce. We're going to go ahead and put that on a medium heat. Put some butter. I put four tablespoons of butter. Then I did go ahead and add a tablespoon of the minced garlic. Stir that around. Let it get fragrant for about a minute. Then you're going to go in with your two cups of heavy cream. And after you pour that in, you're just going to go ahead and add some sea salt. And that's to taste, just whatever you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and do some black pepper. Garlic powder as well. The garlic and onion powder is optional, um, but I do add it for extra flavor. Then I did do some basil leaves. You can also do Italian seasoning. I'm going to give that a good mix. Now I am adding a lobster bouillon mix. Um, I did one teaspoon to one and a half cups of boiling water. And that just adds so much flavor. I mixed that in as well. And just to thin out my sauce, you can use your pasta water, but I use that. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and add our pasta to the boiling water. Go ahead and mix that down. Ensure that all of the noodles are covered so that we can make sure we have an even cook. Now you're going to go ahead and add your one and a half cups of Italian cheese to the Alfredo. Make sure to go ahead and thicken it up. Make sure that you stir it up thoroughly just to make sure that the cheese is distributed evenly through the sauce. We're going to go ahead and add our pasta back into that sauce. Make sure that you mix that really well. Ensure that all of the pasta is covered by the sauce. Once you're done with your pasta, um, your salmon shall also be ready to come out of the oven. And here's what the final product looks like once it comes out of the oven. And then here is my final plating. You just go ahead and place the salmon over the top of the pasta and that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you all for being here.